For many years, time out was the go-to strategy for children who needed a chance to regroup. But even though the intent was good, the implementation of the strategy sometimes left children isolated and without guidance. The idea behind time out was removing the child from the stressful situation for a moment so that they can regroup and reset. We turned time out into a punishment strategy, but it was never the intent of it. And so if we want to recall it something else's, like, uh, like reset, hit the reset button, um, or to regroup, or to take some time to yourself, or to reflect for a moment, or whatever else we want to call it, to feel or reframe it and frame it something differently. I'm all for it, because the idea behind it in the first place was never to put the child in some kind of an isolation containment. The idea behind it was to basically give the child an opportunity to hit a reset button and to think about it and then regroup and then come right back into the situation. Time Out has been updated and turned into a new strategy called Time In. The book, Promoting Resilience in Preschoolers, a strategy guide for early childhood professionals by Karen Chiron and Mary McCrane, describes the differences between the old Time Out and the new Time In. In Time Out, a child is often sent away from the group and is alone for a set amount of time. A child is told to think about what you've done. The strategy can be punitive by shaming the child. It's typically not linked to reflection, discussion, problem solving, or relationship building. On the other hand, with time in, the child is redirected to a quiet place near classmates for as long as he needs to regroup. The child is asked to think about how to calm himself with guidance from his teacher using the teachable moment. The strategy typically involves reflection, discussion, problem solving, and relationship building. To make time in effective, use the child's name and talk about the feeling she is having. If necessary, restate the rules for your classroom. Help the child find a place to regroup and reset. If the child is too upset, you can gently guide her to a place. Do not leave her there alone, but stay nearby to help her gain control of her strong feelings. Allow her as much time as she needs to rejoin the group. Once she is calm, discuss the situation and ideas for how to handle her strong emotions the next time. If the child's words or actions were hurtful to others, help her make genuine amends. The benefit of time in is that the child gets the support that they need in the teachable moment that has arisen. So we've, we've just had something happen. With young children, that's the moment to learn something about it. And so time in gives us an opportunity to seize that teachable moment, to help a child learn about their feelings, which may be the first time that they've ever had a chance to, and to help that child learn alternate ways to cope um, in sort of a really sort of critical time versus isolating and what tends to happen with time away or time out is sort of isolating, shaming, and leaving a child really alone with difficult feelings and a difficult situation that they don't know how to deal with. If they did, they wouldn't have gotten themselves in that situation in the first place. And so we don't want to leave them alone with it. We want to help them along the way, which also helps to build our relationship with them. Most good behavioral intervention strategies help you build your relationship with a child. You want children to know you expect them to experience a wide range of feelings, and you are there to help them find ways to express strong feelings in safe ways that don't hurt their friends. You know, we don't want our children to grow up thinking that you're never going to be angry, you're never going to be mad, you're never going to be frustrated. We want them to know you are going to experience all of those, and it's okay. Now, how you experience those is what we want to teach them. And so in classrooms where time in is being implemented properly, the child knows, I'm not in trouble because I'm mad. I'm not in trouble because I'm frustrated. It's okay. And I am learning strategies to, to calm myself down. And a time in can be anywhere. And so we as teachers need to create a space in our classroom where they can take this break and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no punitive attachment attached to needing to step away and calm down, regroup, and I'm ready again. Having a set-aside space for time in might work for some teachers. It could be a table with quiet activities, 
a music or book corner, a beanbag or cozy area, or it might not be one particular place. Time in can take place right where a behavioral incident occurs. As long as the child can take a break, catch his breath, and have a chance to regroup, time in can really happen anywhere. As the child becomes more aware of his own strong emotions, he may be able to anticipate when he needs some time to regroup and reset. But until a child gains that self-understanding, he'll need help from his teacher. This help often involves providing the child with concrete things to do so that his focus can shift from anger or frustration to a substitute action. It's easy for children to sort of say, I'm supposed to reset, but to really understand what that means is a much more complex sort of decision-making process for children. And so oftentimes I'll say, let's just practice. What would it do? Well, I take some deep breaths. And then I would think about a quiet animal. That's one thing that children sometimes will do. What's a quiet animal? Like a, like a giraffe. Okay, so giraffe's sort of quiet. I have no idea if giraffes are quiet, but I, let's pretend. Uh, and then I'm going to sort of pretend I'm a giraffe. Or I'm a turtle. That's a big sort of piece of, of the work that we do. That helps you reset because you're actually trying to do something to reset. If we just say go over there and reset, that doesn't mean anything to a child. We've all heard an adult tell an upset child to calm down. Well, the child may not have the ability to calm down without help from a teacher. Giving children words, self-talk phrases they can use right where they are when they're upset can help make time in more effective. I don't know that you need to go somewhere else to reset. You can sort of say, right, if I'm four years old, I can take a deep breath. I've practiced it. I know why I'm doing it. I know I'm supposed to slow down. I may even say in my head some of that self-talk. We want to help children learn how to do self-talk. Maybe those kinds of skills are the kinds of things we want them to learn rather than when you're having difficulty, you have to go off by yourself. Because I don't know about you, but no one at my office says, hey, you know what? Just go off by yourself, take three breaths, and then I'll check on you and I'll, I'll let you know if you can come back and do your work. You have to keep going. Right? As somebody who drives in traffic for an hour and a half each way every day, I'm doing a lot of resets while I'm still doing it. And I think we can help children learn that as well. Time in is a strategy that turns behavioral incidents into learning opportunities. It strengthens the learning community by accepting that building self-regulation is a process that includes missteps and doesn't require isolating children from their friends. Children need to know that they can make mistakes and still remain a valued member of the community.